Imagine waking up one day and realizing that every choice you've made for the past year wasn't truly yours. Subtle influences guided your path, shaping decisions you thought were your own. Now, pause for a moment. What if that's happening to you right now? You may not see the strings being pulled, but that doesn't mean they're not there. The truth is, control can slip away so silently that by the time you notice, it feels too late. The one who controls your emotions controls you. But here's the twist. The power to resist manipulation is already in your hands. It's not about overpowering others, but about mastering the art of self-awareness. If you're tired of feeling like your choices aren't your own, Stay tuned because the strategies we'll explore today will show you how to defend your will against even the subtlest attempts to steer your life. Before we dive in, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below with your thoughts on how you maintain control in a world full of hidden influences. Let's get into it. Lesson 1. Recognize the subtle chains of influence. You walk into a room feeling confident, but after just a few words from someone, your mood shifts. You're now questioning yourself, your choices, even your abilities. But what changed? It wasn't a direct attack, wasn't even criticism, but a subtle suggestion, a few well-placed words or a slight shift in tone, and suddenly you're doubting yourself. This is the art of manipulation at its finest, and it begins with the mind. The trick you don't even see it happening. In ancient times, the most skilled tacticians didn't need to wield weapons to defeat their enemies. They mastered the power of influence, controlling battles not with force, but with carefully crafted suggestions. Your modern-day manipulators do the same. They plant seeds of doubt, shift your focus, and gradually steer you away from your true desires and goals. It's so subtle that you might believe the thoughts and decisions are entirely yours. Think of it like a chess game. Each move is calculated not to dominate you all at once, but to slowly nudge you into a position where your options become limited. When you realize this, it can feel unsettling. How many times have you said yes to something because of someone else's influence, without even realizing you were being steered? Here's where the story changes. Your greatest defense is awareness. The moment you recognize these subtle chains, you can start breaking them. When someone plants a thought or suggestion in your mind, pause. Ask yourself, is this really what I want, or am I being led towards someone else's goal? It's easy to assume you're in control, but the real power comes from stopping and reflecting. Ancient wisdom reminds us that the mind is both a fortress and a battlefield. If you don't guard it, you leave it vulnerable to attacks disguised as harmless advice or friendly suggestions. So what's the trick here? It's simple yet profound. Begin by questioning everything, especially the subtle influences that seem insignificant. It's not paranoia, it's awareness. The first step to regaining control is seeing the manipulation for what it is, a slow, deliberate erosion of your autonomy. Like a river that slowly wears away at rock, manipulation works over time, subtly shaping your thoughts, actions, and beliefs. But here's the key. You don't have to let it. Once you become aware of the subtle tactics people use to control your decisions, you'll find yourself in a position of power. You'll recognize when someone's trying to shift your emotions, influence your choices, or push you towards something that isn't aligned with your true self. In the end, it's not about confronting manipulation with aggression. It's about becoming so aware of yourself and your mind that manipulation has no power over you. Remember, no one can control you without your consent, and the moment you realize how often that consent is subtly given, you're already on the path to reclaiming your will. Lesson 2. The Illusion of Obligation. Picture this. You've been asked for a favor by someone close to you. A small request. Nothing major. Perhaps it's your colleague asking for help on a project or a family member needing you to run an errand. You oblige, of course, because you feel that tug of duty, 
that quiet but persistent voice telling you, you owe them this. But let's stop there. Do you really owe them anything? Here's where the illusion of obligation comes in. Much of what we consider obligation is, in fact, manipulation disguised as social norms or expectations. We are conditioned to believe that we must comply with certain demands, especially from people we care about or those in authority. But what if that sense of obligation is nothing more than an invisible chain? Let me tell you a story. In ancient times, kings didn't need to threaten their subjects to get what they wanted. Often, all they needed to do was invoke a sense of duty, honor to the crown, loyalty to the throne, and the people would serve willingly, not because they truly wanted to, but because they believed they had to. The same trick is used today. When someone plays on your emotions, making you feel guilty for saying no or for choosing your own path, they're wielding an invisible chain of obligation over you. Now, let's shift the focus to you. How often have you done something not out of true desire, but because you felt obligated? Maybe you didn't want to let someone down, or perhaps you feared being seen as selfish. But here's the real question. Was that obligation ever real, or was it a construct created to control your choices? The tricky part is, those who manipulate through obligation rarely appear sinister. Often, they genuinely believe that their requests are reasonable, and that's what makes it even harder to see through. The person asking for your time, your energy, or your help may not even realize they're pulling your strings, but you feel the weight of their expectations all the same. Ancient philosophers understood this well. They knew that freedom doesn't only come from breaking physical chains, but from recognizing and cutting the emotional and psychological ones too. True freedom begins when you realize that obligation is often a story, one that others tell to keep you bound. Here's the trick. The next time you feel that familiar tug of obligation, pause. Ask yourself, am I doing this because I truly want to, or because I feel like I have to? That single moment of reflection is all it takes to reveal whether you're acting from your own will or under the influence of someone else's expectations. And here's where the power lies. When you start questioning those invisible obligations, you'll begin to notice how often you've been nudged, pressured, or guilted into doing things you didn't truly want to do. This awareness doesn't mean you stop helping others, but it does mean that you help from a place of choice, not obligation. You may be surprised how much of your time and energy has been spent fulfilling the imagined obligations of others. But once you break free from that illusion, you reclaim not just your time, but your autonomy. You learn to act on your terms, not out of some false sense of duty imposed by others. This is true freedom, knowing that your actions are yours and yours alone. Lesson 3. The Trap of Flattery Imagine this. You're at work, and a colleague compliments you on a job well done. Not just any compliment, though. It's over the top, almost lavish. You're the backbone of this team, they say. We couldn't do any of this without you. Your ego swells a bit, doesn't it? It feels good to be praised, to be acknowledged as indispensable. But beware, there's a hidden game being played here. This isn't just about recognition. It's the subtle art of manipulation, all wrapped in a bow of flattery. Think back to ancient courtrooms, where advisors and courtiers surrounded kings. They were known for their silver tongues, praising the monarch to gain favor, influence, or at times, manipulate the king into making decisions that benefited them. Those kings, often blinded by the need to feel important, fell for these traps, more often than not. History is filled with powerful figures who made poor decisions because they were swayed by the sweet poison of flattery. Now you're no king, but the principle remains. When someone showers you with praise, it's easy to fall into the trap of feeling obligated to them. You might even begin to act in ways that aren't truly aligned with your goals or values, all because your ego is being stroked. Here's where the tricky part comes in. 
How do you know when praise is genuine or when it's being used to manipulate you? The answer lies in examining the intent behind the words. When the praise is followed by a request or a subtle push toward a decision, that's your red flag. It's like the fisherman throwing bait. The compliment is the shiny lure, and if you bite, you're on the hook. I'll share a story with you, one that reveals how even the wise can be caught off guard by flattery. There's an ancient tale of a philosopher who was often surrounded by students eager to learn from his wisdom. One day, a particularly ambitious student approached him, heaping endless praise on the philosopher's intellect, calling him a genius beyond comprehension. The philosopher, amused but aware, listened quietly, but he knew better than to let his ego get in the way. He responded, I am as wise as you believe me to be, but only in the silence after you stop speaking. The philosopher had seen through the flattery. He understood that genuine respect doesn't need exaggeration. It simply exists. But flattery, flattery is the veil that covers someone's true motives, and often it's used to manipulate you into acting against your better judgment. Let's bring this back to you. How often have you been caught in a web of flattery where the praise feels too good, too perfectly timed? And how often have those compliments been followed by a request for your help, your time or your influence? You see, flattery isn't always about boosting your ego. It's often about lowering your defenses so you're more susceptible to someone else's agenda. Here's the trick. The next time someone lavishes praise on you, stop and ask yourself, what do they want from me? Pay attention to what follows the compliment. Are they truly acknowledging your worth, or are they positioning you to fulfill their desires? Recognizing the difference will allow you to see flattery for what it is, just another tool in the manipulator's kit. In the end, you must remember that genuine respect and admiration don't need to be over the top. They are steady, consistent, and expect nothing in return. But flattery, flattery is fleeting and comes with hidden strings. Your power lies in knowing when to accept praise and when to recognize it as the bait meant to reel you into someone else's plans. Stay aware and don't let your ego be the leash they use to lead you where they want. Lesson 4. The Illusion of Consensus Picture yourself in a meeting room, surrounded by colleagues who are all nodding in agreement to a decision that just doesn't sit right with you. The room feels like a current, everyone flowing in the same direction, and there you are, hesitating, uncertain if your objection will be welcomed or shunned. But something is pulling at you, a subtle urge to just go along with the crowd. After all, if everyone agrees, they must be right, right? Here's where the trick lies. What if the consensus around you isn't real? What if it's been carefully orchestrated to nudge you into conformity, using the pressure of groupthink to manipulate your actions? This is one of the oldest forms of subtle control, creating the illusion that everyone's on the same page, so you better follow along. Let me tell you a story that dates back to the ancient philosophers who questioned everything, even the apparent consensus of their peers. There's a tale of a wise man who was invited to a royal court to share his advice on a pressing matter. When he arrived, he noticed that all the advisers were already in agreement on a course of action, and the king was pleased that his court had found such unity. But the wise man, with his discerning eye, saw through this harmony. He asked a simple question. Did anyone here arrive at a different conclusion? even for a moment before falling in line. Silence fell over the room. Slowly, a few hesitant hands were raised. The king, puzzled, asked why they hadn't spoken up before. Their response? We thought we were alone in our doubts. That's the illusion of consensus in action. It wasn't that everyone truly agreed. They just didn't want to be the odd one out. The wise man knew that the most dangerous decisions are often the ones made in silence, where dissent is stifled by the overwhelming pull of the majority. Consensus, when manufactured, is a powerful tool of manipulation because it preys on our innate desire to belong, 
to not stand out, and to avoid conflict. You see, this trick is used in so many aspects of life, from business to personal relationships. You might notice it in group dynamics, where decisions are made quickly, and dissenting voices are drowned out or never even rise to the surface. Or perhaps it's more subtle, like when a partner, friend or colleague keeps pushing an idea and casually mentions, everyone else thinks this is the best way forward, making you feel isolated in your doubts. It's designed to make you question yourself, to manipulate your natural tendency to trust in the collective judgment over your own instincts. But here's the twist. Often the consensus isn't as unanimous as it seems. People, just like you, may have doubts but stay silent because they assume no one else shares their concerns. This is the secret power of illusion, making you believe that to speak up is to stand alone when in truth others may be waiting for someone to break the spell. So, how do you defend your will against this type of manipulation? The first step is to question the consensus. Ask yourself, is this agreement real, or has it been manufactured? Pay attention to the way the decision is being presented. Are dissenting voices truly being heard, or are they being swept aside in favor of a quick resolution? And most importantly, trust your gut. If something doesn't feel right, even if everyone else seems on board, it's worth speaking up. The trick, of course, is in knowing when consensus is genuine and when it's a facade. Genuine consensus comes from open discussion, where all voices are heard and respected, but manipulation. That comes when the pressure to conform overrides the truth of what's really going on. Next time you find yourself in a room full of nodding heads, remember the ancient philosopher who dared to ask, did anyone here arrive at a different conclusion? Your ability to see through the illusion of consensus is one of your greatest defenses against manipulation. Use it wisely. Remember that cliff we stood on at the beginning? Now the question is no longer about standing at the edge, questioning the next step. Now you're in control, staring out into the vast horizon, fully aware that the journey ahead is yours to navigate. What felt like uncertainty has now transformed into opportunity, and the greatest power lies in how you choose to wield it. But here's the real question. What will you do with this knowledge? Will it simply be another moment of reflection, or will you take action? That's entirely up to you. If this resonated with you, don't just close this chapter. Hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below with a question no one else can answer. Not because the answer isn't there, but because it's a question only you can unlock for yourself. And don't forget to share this with someone who's standing on their own metaphorical cliff, waiting for a push toward clarity. This may feel like the end, but it's only the beginning of your next step. Keep the conversation going, explore the paths that remain undiscovered, and remember, each choice you make is a chisel shaping the masterpiece that is your life.